I'm Laura Ingram. This is the Ingram Angle from Washington tonight. Thanks for joining us. Let the meltdown begin. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Oh, do you feel the tensions are so high on the left across America tonight? They are desperate. I'm telling you, desperate to find any edge on Republicans as the midterms approach. So in the aftermath of this hideous attack on Paul Pelosi in their San Francisco home, of course, we hope and pray for his full recovery from this disgusting attack. The question is whether Democrats will attempt to use the actions of a lone lunatic to chill political speech. Now, if so, this is because their grip on power is beginning to give way on two major fronts tonight, in politics and across social media. Now, for them, Elon Musk's successful purchase of Twitter is a total invasion of their inner sanctums, like an intruder waltzing into their living rooms, turning on Fox News, maybe making a sandwich, and then using the bathroom. How dare he! <laughs> Meanwhile, most regular people see Elon's desire to kind of house clean at Twitter as just plain common sense. After all, we've discovered there is a lot of fat to cut there. Welcome to a day in my life as a Twitter employee. Then made my way down to this log cabin area. I don't know what this is, but it was really cool. I played some foosball with my friends to kind of unwind a bit. Um, also found this really cool meditation room that I thought was super neat. Um, I didn't do any yoga, but they have this yoga room. Made some espresso. And then before leaving for the day, had some red wine um, that's on tap. Now, this is the culture that the left is desperate to protect. A private club for supremely entitled, rather ditzy, and self-satisfied liberals. That's not enough for them to control the New York Times, the Washington Post, every major regional newspaper, all three broadcast networks, most of Silicon Valley, all of Hollywood and every major university. The fact that they want to vilify anyone who disagrees with them, including this network and Musk himself, shows that their claims to care about democracy or free speech were always specious. They truly don't know how to deal with a pluralist, pluralistic society in which other people have different views. Just look what they do any time a conservative arrives to speak on a college campus. They have no home here! They have no home here! Now, they may all feel protected on campus by all the wokesters, but in real life, it's all starting to come apart. It turns out that the left and the party they now control were wrong about just about everything. And this week, the media regime finally started to notice. Democratic strategists are concerned. He acknowledged that the party is having trouble in polling leading up to the midterms. You know, there's new polls that find Democrats may actually be in trouble with another group. Gen X may be leaning away from Democrats. Of course, the diehards are exasperated that Americans just don't get it. But basically, Democrats' messages, Roe v. Wade and fear of losing democracy, which are two pretty monstrous things to talk about, are not mm -hmm. bucking what people feel as they go to the gas pumps. And that's unfortunate. They're not the kitchen table issues, although they are the most important issues of our time. Don't you get it, people? You're supposed to care about those things. Well, the New York Times describes just how frantic the Democrats have even gotten about the hokel Zeldin race, saying with just days until Election Day, Democrats and their allies are mounting a frenzied push to keep Ms. Hochul in office, pouring millions of dollars into last-minute ads amid concerns that their typically reliable bedrock of black and Latino voters might not turn out. The then question here is, what would they be turning out for? High crime? Runaway inflation? Maybe the migrant influx? That's what they should be voting for? The truth is, we now have close Senate and gubernatorial races in places like Minnesota, Washington State, Oregon, even in New Hampshire. Democrats never thought they'd have to defend seats there. Meanwhile, Governors Abbott in Texas, DeSantis in Florida, and Kemp in Georgia are all up double digits over their Democrat rivals. And why is this all happening? Because the truth is getting too hard for the press to avoid. Democrat policies have left Americans poorer, our country weaker, and with the added bonus of taking us to the brink of an all-out war with Russia. 
and there's going to be a huge political price to be paid for this. Yet rather than trying to tack to the middle, Democrats, they just keep digging themselves further into a hole. And now populist Republican candidates who are bold and who are brave are about to bury them. Now, they kept telling themselves lie after lie, the Democrats. First, that inflation was transitory. I see important transitory influences at work, and I don't anticipate that it will be permanent. That most of the price increases we've seen are, were expected and are expected to be temporary. This is not record inflation anymore. I'm bringing it down. They said that crime was a Republican talking point. Yes, we have a real crime problem that we are addressing. But part of that is the perception that every day those six crimes are being highlighted over and over again. They thought that their propaganda would mean minority voters would just stay loyal to the Democrats no matter what. There's a major concern surrounding the racist rhetoric that often goes hand in glove with law and order messages. Some Republican candidates are intentionally linking race and crime as a tactic to undermine their black opponents. And they believe that parents wouldn't kick up a fuss in school board elections, even when school boards were being dominated by radical gender activists. I've lived in Loudoun County my entire life. I care so deeply about this community. We need a representative who shares our values and will fight for our values. I've seen what happens when we don't have someone who's advocating for those who are left out of the room. Nick doesn't seem to show a whole lot of interest in including parents in the equation uh, because he specifically stated that he would support the policy that leaves parents in the dark when it comes to knowing what names their children are using in school or which bathroom they're using. I don't believe that Nick is being genuine in his, uh, in his concern about parent involvement uh, when he wants to cut them out of the equation. Nick, would you like to use 30 seconds here? <laughs> no, I'm good. No, I'm good. Well, of course, all of what these people have been saying is false. And now the voters are catching up to the lies. But the biggest lie of all was that there were red states and blue states. Look, there's the United States of America. Obama said that, right? Back in 2004, well, he was right. That means political leaders can't take any state for granted, they can't write any state off, or leave any state behind. Americans coast to coast are tired. They're tired of seeing streets crawling with druggies and criminals. They're tired of seeing the southern border teeming with illegals. They're definitely tired of seeing their 401ks cratering. They're tired of paying 100 bucks to fill up their SUVs. And they're tired of the drag queens twerking in front of little kids. They're definitely tired of hearing college kids who are caught a little snowflakes whine about privilege and microaggressions. A reckoning is coming, whether the Democrats like it or not, and not a moment too soon. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.